All right, DA method, DA method type three. Okay, so this is type three. Now, we've talked about type one, where the derivative row, if you differentiate, you get down to a zero, you can stop there on both columns, and that is your last row, and you're, you're, you're done, right? You do your diagonal thing, and you're done. The, the zero row is full, and you're done. The type two is when you keep an eye on the rows, uh, and you differentiate and integrate, and then when you can easily integrate a row, you can stop there as well and write that as a separate integral. That's type two, which is in a previous lesson here. This one is type three. So this one is, um, again, DI method still, but what you want to keep an eye on here now, the third thing you want to keep your eye on, is this right here. When a row in the DI chart repeats the original integral. When it repeats the original integral, then you stop, okay? That's when you stop. So this is type three, okay? When a row in the DI chart starts to repeat the original. So an example of this would come with this integral of e to the x sine x dx. So let, let's see, remember our Lie 8, okay, this is how we uh, determine which one we're going to differentiate. So logarithms, do we have a ln? Nope. Um, uh, what was the i again? Inverse trig, no, <laughs> don't use that very often. No inverse trig. Algebra, mm, like a polynomial? Nope. Okay, so what's t? Trig. Ah, trig comes before exponential. So we're gonna do we're gonna do sine x here, and we're gonna do e to the x here. So we remember our plus here. We remember our minus, plus, minus, and so on. So this, this row, remember, is an integral, right? Each row is an integral. That's our original integral. I've just put it in the chart there. So now I'm going to take the derivative of sine of x, which is going to be cos of x. That's nice and, nice and neat. And on this next one, the integral of e to the x is simply e to the x. Okay, that is awesome. Uh, let's do this again. What's the uh, derivative of cos? Well, the derivative of cos is negative sine x. Okay, awesome. And what's the integral of uh, e to the x? Well, that's e to the x, okay? That's awesome. Now, um, okay, so plus, minus, plus, uh, minus. And this is where you stop and you notice, okay? This is where you stop and you notice that uh, disregarding the signs, okay, disregarding the pl plus, minus, okay, not we're not counting that. But notice we have sine x times e to the x right here. Sine x times e to the x. Now, I wrote this as plus a minus sine, but you could write it like this, right? Plus a minus, it could be just a minus out here. And so what you have is you have a repeat. You have sine x times e to the x. So here's your repeat. So this is where type three comes into play and you say, okay, wait a minute, I've got a row that repeats itself. So chances are you might, obviously this derivative is not going to get to zero, right? It's not going to get to zero ever. Um, you're going to be flipping from sine and cos, sine and cos. So you're not going to come across a row that's easy to integrate, like in type two. So when you, f when you find a row that repeats, this is also when you can stop in your DI chart, okay? For type three, stop. So what, what, do we, what do we do here? Well, you write it out like this. And this is where we're actually going to uh, write out the whole thing. So watch this. I'm going to write the integral, the original integral here. We're going to need this. So we have e to the x sine x dx, okay, equals. All right, so going back to our, our chart here, how do we start to tear this down? Or how do we start to interpret this? I look at this, right? So I've got sine x. I might put e to the x before that, it just looks a little neater. e to the x sine x, okay. Minus, minus cos x times e to the x, or minus e to the x cos x. See that? Now, watch this. Um, I'm going to write this as an integral. Sorry, minus integral of sine x e to the x dx. Minus integral sine x e to the x dx. Okay. Now, why? Why do we do that? Well, what you want to notice here is that this integral and this integral are exactly the same. Hmm. 
Okay, exactly the same. So what we're going to be able to do here is we're actually, because remember, we're looking for what is this equal to? What is that equal to? That's what we're looking for. Well, I have what this is equal to, but I have a common term. I have a like term. And you can actually combine like integrals. If they're the same, you can combine them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the integral of, and this is, can be written either way, e to the x sine x. So I'll make it the same as the other one. I'm going to add that to both sides. See this? So these two cancel out. And what do I have over here on the left now? I'll, I'll pop back to my black marker. So this is actually two integrals of e to the x sine x, right? dx. OK? Now, I, I can't really combine these. I could factor, but don't worry about it. So e to the x sine x minus e to the x cos x, OK? And I guess we would have to put a plus c out here. We'll do that at the end. But look at what we have here, OK? I have 2 times this integral. And this integral is what I want to end up with. So how do I get rid of a 2? Well, I divide by 2. And you divide both sides by 2. So that's, that's how you simplify this one. So you've got e to the x sine of x dx equals, um, and now I'm going to take out, uh, you want to take out e to the x over 2? I don't know. Uh, e to the x over 2, you can take that out, and you're left with sine x minus cos x plus c. How are we doing there? Plus c, yeah. Okay, you liking that? I kind of like that. So, again, type 3, type 3, when you come across uh, a repetition here, a repetition of your original integral, then you stop, and then you're going to be able to combine like terms, and, uh, and that's how you're going to find your, your integral. Okay? So here's your solution. All right, so we're going to take a look at this question here. This is 1H in your Red Stewart text, or 1G, sorry. And uh, this looks a little bit, a little bit funny. Like, how do we, um, how do we integrate tan to the negative one uh, of, of x? Okay. So do we have, uh, do we have this uh, on an integral chart? Well, um, maybe, but let's work it with the DI method. So how do you, how do you do that? Well, what you want to do is you want to, first of all, understand that this could be rewritten as integral of 1 times tan to the negative 1 of x. Okay. So yes, you, you, you'll be able to find tan to the negative 1 of x and what it is, but this is sort of uh, integrating it without just using you know its property, right? its, its identity, whatever. Uh, without just using the chart, we're going to do this uh, by parts. So one of the parts that we can introduce here is just a one, one times, okay? All right, so um, if we took a look at uh, which one we're gonna differentiate, Li8, okay, what's, what's what? Well, um, the L is logs, no logs. I is inverse trig. So I guess we're gonna put tan to the negative one here. And one is just an algebraic term, so that obviously comes next, okay? Okay. Uh, so again, this is more like a proof of, of uh, the integral. You have this on a chart, but this is how we would do it. So derivative of tan to the negative 1 of x, okay, what's the derivative of that? Well, you could look that up, whatever. That is 1 over 1 plus x squared, okay? What's the derivative of tan to the negative 1 of x? What's the integral of 1? Well, the integral of 1 is x okay so if this is a type 2 I have a little note here that this is uh, can be treated like a type 2 which type 2 was um, we can actually stop when we can integrate a row okay so we're, I'm gonna write this as x times tan to the negative 1 of x minus an integral of x over 1 plus x squared the x. Okay. 
so why did I choose to stop there? Or what's it, what's the deal with this integral? Isn't this just as difficult as anything we've seen? Well, actually, this is a good candidate for u substitution. Because I can rewrite this integral as 1 over 1 plus x squared times x dx. See that? And this, this 1 plus x squared could be equal to u. And so du is 2x dx, which I have a portion of that. All I need to do is to figure out what the, the 2 is. So, hope you're with me here so far, but I'm going to do u substitution here. That's all I'm doing. So I'm going to put a 2 in there, and I'll put a 1 half outside. Now I have 2x dx. And so this integral can actually be written as 1 half, the integral of 1 over u du. And what's the integral of 1 over u du? The integral is ln of u. ln of u. Okay? And so uh, we'll make that an absolute value. It should be an absolute value here. Although this is going to be 1 plus x squared. This is going to be positive anyways. So it doesn't really matter. But now what we have here is we have our final answer. x times tan to the negative 1 x minus 1 half times the ln of 1 plus x squared plus c. And I'm not, sh I'm not sure, I'll have to double check here to see if, if I've shown you a chart of uh, integrals here of uh, I'm not sure if we have this handy. That looks pretty unfamiliar, actually, from what we've been doing in class. But anyways, that is your integral there for this one. So other questions in your textbook that are similar to this, uh, 1H was asked about. I might do 1H here on this lesson, too. But uh, you may have to stop when you get to a an integral that looks like, hey, I could do U substitution here because my inside function is 1 plus x squared. The derivative of that is 2x. And hey, that's part of that derivative. 2x. I'm pretty close. So I could do u substitution on this row. Okay. So that is, um, that's, that's type, that's type 3, um, uh, DI method type 3 with an example from type 2 there.